Okay, I'm going to uh, describe Simplicity, which is a next generation smart contracting system for Bitcoin and Bitcoin related chains like the Blockstream Liquid sidechain. It's uh, primarily the work of Russell O'Connor, who's been actively working on this on Simplicity for about four years. And um, more recently, Andrew Polstra has also been helping and other people have been helping a review as well in the community and uh, Greg Maxwell had also looked at it. So as I said, this is primarily the work of Russell O'Connor. The uh, genesis of the project was a discussion of MAST. So when a lot of people have heard about MAST and simplicity is the fuller uh, MAST design standing for Merkleized Abstract Syntax Tree, which we'll get onto in a moment. This was discussed in uh, 2012 as many things in Bitcoin history in IRC. It's an uh, um, idea for a next generation Bitcoin script, which is now an advanced stage of development. Russell's been working on it about four years now. We did a developer preview release last August and a Simplicity Jets release last month, which and I'm going to summarize how it all fits together and what Simplicity is. So it's a fully, fully general programming language with introspection. It's UTXO model, so it's a soft fork, sort of compatible model for Bitcoin. Bitcoin already has the potential for multiple script levels, multiple script versions with SegWit and Schnorr and Taproot introducing a new script versioning mechanism, which is slightly more flexible. What's different about Simplicity is it has formal semantics which help proof assistants to uh, proof things about programs, in particular the security and assumptions. Um, due to Post theorem, which is a kind of computer science concept, Simplicity is not Turing complete, however, provides full expressive power because it's based on verification, not execution. So what would we be able to do if we had simplicity today in Bitcoin? So for example, the Schnorr script would not need to be a new BIP. It could be implemented as an extension within the language even. Um, but there is a concept of JETS, which is a way to uh, make commonly used larger programs more space efficient and more time efficient by swapping out fast implementations that have been formally proven to be equivalent. So what is simple about simplicity is the semantics. So it's a very low level language at its core and there are nine operators and I'm going to describe briefly what they are. So there's a, a unit type, which is uh, below a Boolean. It's a, a unitary value can only hold one value, uh, i.e. true. Then there are uh, type function composition. So you can compose two functions. You can augment the domain of a type to the left or right, which is inject left and inject right operator there. The case statement, which is a kind of if statement, uh, pair is to compose two types. Sorry, yeah, pair. And then there's a way to kind of take the left or right part of a sub expression. So basically, it's operating on bits and bit strings and tuples and types. So even though it's low level, it's operating with abstract concepts. The next slide is showing the uh, semantics. So this fully defines the semantics, if you understand the syntax at least, about what each of these very low level operators do. So it's, in that it's low level, it's uh, formally defined, uh, but there is no, there's no, for example, 32 bit add, there's not even a half adder. So here is a half adder implemented in the list like syn syntax. So it's adding up two bits. Here's the binary for the half adder. And this is the uh, 
directed acyclic graph of the uh, half adder. And it shows that there is reuse as well. There's no looping, but there is reuse. And here's an 8-bit adder. You can see that there's kind of logarithmically nested reuse of uh, 2-bit adder, 4-bit adder, etc., recursively. And the next example is a SHA-256 compression function. It's a bit small, so you can't read it, but that implements everything from this kind of very logic bit level layer up to a SHA-256 compression function. The simplicity uh, program is interpreted when the interpreter is called the bit machine. So from the simplicity program, it's assembled into a simplicity binary, not really combined because it's not compiled because it's a very simple conversion. Um, bit machine executes that using implicit stacks. Simplicity is formally specified in Coq. Coq is a language that's useful for proof assistance. We have three implementations, one in Coq, one in Haskell, and one in C. The Coq implementation is formally verified to correctly execute all simplicity programs, which is a very strong assurance that the interpreter is correct. That becomes possible because of the extremely simple low-level semantics. And we have a C implementation, and there's a mechanism or path to formally proving the correctness of the C implementation via a project called the Verifiable C project, and we have some sub-programs already verified using Verifiable C. So uh, there are many things you could do with simplicity. It's fairly general, so one could implement Schnorr. One could potentially implement something like confidential transactions. One could implement some of the inputs for the new version of Lightning, Lightning L2, such as a uh, sig hash note input that could be implemented natively. Uh, vaults, which is a interesting advanced storage mechanism for Bitcoin could be implemented, uh, which today are a bit hard to implement or you have to implement with limitations. You could have a velocity enforced combined hot and cold wallet potentially and all kinds of partial swaps or derivatives on liquid, which has access to multiple assets. This stems from the ability to do covenants in liquid and in simplicity. Uh, and simplicity is able to provide formal provability. So you make, the way that looks is you, you describe some constraints on variance uh, assumptions about how your program is gonna work and then you prove that those things are true under all possible input assumptions. So we have a number of jets implemented, for example, the SHA-256 compression. There's a verifiable C proof that the C implementation is the same as the simplicity implementation. There are jets for some common 32-bit uh, arithmetic, functional signatures, We're working on more jets and more proofs of their equivalent C implementations. Um, with the Simplicity Jets release last month, we got a significant speed up um, because of the use of Jets, basically. And Simplicity is also extremely compact. So it's actually quite practical to write simple programs and just use them in line without necessarily needing to make a Jet. Um, but something as complicated as Schnorr from the ground up is 13.6 kilobytes. Now that's more compact than it sounds because that implements everything. It implements elliptic curve library, the SHA-256 implementation, all of the hashing and so forth. Uh, with JETS that brings the verification time down to 500 microseconds as compared to 200 microseconds for ECDSA and 11.5 minutes for fully interpreted uh, 13.6 kilobytes of very low level simplicity code. So you can see that JETS make a big difference when you have a larger program that's doing a, log, a lot of log scaled uh, reuse of code. So even though it hasn't got loops, 
it can potentially cover quite a large amount of code in a compact program like that. So when do we get access to simplicity? So what we're doing first is uh, with, with today's release, simplicity is available in a branch of elements, which is the open source platform under, that Liquid is built using. And also the simplicity in a branch of Bitcoin so that people can try it out. Those are both in reg test mode. So it means that you, there's not really a network, it's a kind of single node instance, but you can try things out. Um, so what's needed to integrate simplicity into Liquid? We're aiming to do that this year. Uh, first step we want to do is implement, integrate Taproot and Schnorr into Liquid and then use the Taproot script version mechanism, which is more flexible than the SegWit one. And there's some missing, missing pieces today. So a, a cost model for Jets to take into account the kind of CPU complexity of scripts using Jets. Some more resource estimation, anti-denial of service, uh, finalize a canonical binary format. There is a binary format, but we want to finalize one so that we can support that into the future. Um, a lot more jets and proofs. And the big uh, gap is actually in developer tooling, so we're going to work on that. Another idea uh, is to extend Miniscript so that it can target simplicity outputs. So Miniscript being uh, a project that Peter Wall and others worked on to uh, make it easier to write intentionally Bitcoin scripts. And so we can target simplicity on the back end of that and then extend it with um, simple features that would only be implementable in simplicity. So I to have a slightly higher level language for interacting with simplicity for a subset of the language. So that would be uh, one way to, to start to make it easier to Right simplicity, but of course, people still have access to the full flexibility of going down to the uh, very low level. So, what's the timeline like? So, as I said, today we are testing simplicity in Elements. We made a developer preview release in Elements last September. The Jets release of simplicity last month. We're targeting availability on Liquid uh, later this year. An interesting prospect here is that Simplicity is Bitcoin compatible. So it's very compatible with the uh, UTXO model. It was designed with Bitcoin in mind, actually, before the concept of sidechains was thought of, or blockchain was thought of. This was back in uh, 2012 in some IRC discussions. Uh, one interesting way to bring the technology forward is to try it out, prove it out in Liquid, which will give people the ability to uh, try things live in a sidechain of Bitcoin and get an understanding and get some learning from that. There are um, precedents for this. There are other technologies that have appeared in Elements early or Liquid early and later find their way into Bitcoin. For example, the Elements release had an early version of Segregated Witness, uh, though in a hard fork format, but later found its way into Bitcoin. And an earlier version of Schnorr was also in the initial Elements release. So at some point later, it may be interesting for the community to consider simplicity as a general extension mechanism for Bitcoin if there's uh, consensus for that. Now, to be clear, something like that would be a few years out. And there is also some technical risk or complexity. So there maybe need to be some thought about how to uh, integrate that potentially with a security boundary, like an extension block. Or I think the other point is that a wallet is not going to use a new feature without the authors of the wallet uh, creating it. So for example, if a Lightning wallet was to use the self-extensibility to make a sig hash no input or other uh, alternative Lightning-like function, they would um, do some collaborative work with other Lightning protocol developers, 
finalize a uh, simplicity code for this for this new functionality and program that feature into the new Lightning wallets. And so it's not the case that you know somebody that didn't opt in and use a wallet with awareness of a script would naturally uh, be directly affected. So it would generally affect people opting into a feature. Um, so in terms of sort of power versus risk, it has some similar prospects to today, just with a lot more expressiveness and introspection. So uh, you can have a look more about things here, the Simplicity White Paper, the Jets release, and the source code for Simplicity for Elements and for Bitcoin. So the number of people have been trying it out. Uh, somebody managed to repeat the uh, Jets example from the ground up. I wrote a nice blog about that. Uh, you can have a look at that online as well. So that's it. Thank you very much.